Let's talk about cystic fibrosis. Let's begin with the pathology behind cystic fibrosis, also commonly referred to as CF. Cystic fibrosis is a disease caused by a genetic mutation which prevents exocrine glands in the body from working properly. Healthy exocrine glands secrete easily through ducts, where in cystic fibrosis we have stuck thick mucus. What do exocrine glands do? These glands produce and transfer secretions through ducts. Examples are mucus, tears, sweat, and enzymes. When there is an exocrine gland malfunction, like in cystic fibrosis, the secretions become highly viscous or thick. Let's talk about its impact on the ciliary action. In our bodies, the cilia are like tiny little fingers, which move mucus around and out of the body. In a healthy system, there is little difficulty, but in cystic fibrosis, there is resistance to ciliary action, which slows the rate of mucus movement. So secretions have a difficult time moving and they become stuck, which leads to something called mucus plugging. This mucus plugging is when the mucus becomes too sticky and creates a plug. This causes necessary avenues in the body to become infected, such as the reproductive organs, airways, and GI passageways all become blocked with that thick mucus. It's important to know that there is no cure for this disease. All care is focused on management only. However, there are some medications to help make the disease more manageable. Mucolytics may be used in patients with CF. These drugs help to break up mucus so they can be more easily expelled or coughed up. A common example is pulmazyme. Bronchodilators are used to open the airways, leading to improved air exchange. An example would be albuterol sulfate. The next is pancreatic enzymes, which help to replace the deficit in protease, amylase, and lipase. Remember that these should be swallowed whole or sprinkled over acidic foods. Antibiotics are often used to prevent and treat respiratory bacterial infections. And corticosteroids may be used to decrease inflammation in the airways. We can also use non-pharmacological care such as chest physiotherapy, increased fluids, and diet modifications are necessary for proper management. Let's look at some things the nurse should be monitoring. We want to monitor the lungs for wheezing, ronchi, and crackles. These can all indicate mucus plugging or infection. We also want to monitor oxygen saturation and for signs of respiratory distress, such as dyspnea, audible wheezing, or use of accessory muscles. We also want to monitor the patient's bowel sounds. Hypoactive or hyperactive bowel sounds may indicate an obstruction, as well as distension, firmness, and tenderness. And lastly, we want to monitor electrolyte imbalances, especially hyponatremia due to that excess sodium loss. If you want the rest of this video, check out Nurse in the Making Plus. This includes access to our growing video library, interactive worksheets that go with each video, and practice questions. You can get access to Nurse in the Making Plus with the Complete Nursing School Bundle. Click the link to the Complete Nursing School Bundle and join thousands of other future nurses using Nurse in the Making Plus. You got this, future nurse.